Usher's performing in the halftime show uh, for the Super Bowl this year. So I felt it, <laughs> so I felt that it was only appropriate that we were going to talk about him today. Uh, so today's topic is Usher. My sources are Wikipedia, People.com, Black Post, or I'm sorry, BlackPast.org, and bio, Biography.com. So let's get into it. So we'll start with his early childhood. Um, Usher Raymond IV, mainly referred to as Usher, was born on October 14, 1978, in Dallas, Texas, to his parents, Jonetta Patton and Usher Raymond III. He spent a majority of his childhood in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with his mother and his younger brother, James. His father um, actually left the family when Usher was just a year old. Usher actually joined his first local cl- first local church, church youth choir. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> when he was nine years old. That's crazy. I mean, to start singing at such a young age. And his grandmother actually discovered that Usher had the ability to sing while he was in the church choir. So it's kind of sweet that she kind of discovered like his singing ability at a yeah. really early age. That's cute. Um, they did end up believing that there would be better musical opportunities for Usher to showcase his talents if they moved to a bigger city. So Usher's family did ultimately decide to uh, move to Atlanta, Georgia. And that was where he kind of graduated high school and spent his later teen years. And now we're going to get into his whole music career. So at age 10, 10 is when he started his full on career. He joined a local R&B quintet called New Beginnings, and this was actually in Chattanooga before they moved. The group was organized by a local music producer, Daryl Wheeler, and the group and Usher recorded 10 songs together in 1991 and created the album New Beginnings featuring Usher Raymond IV. The album was only available regionally and by mail order, and for those who don't know what mail order is, it's basically where you would place an order via the phone or through the mail, and you would basically just wait to receive whatever you order. So it was basically the snail mail version of what Amazon is before it existed. Yes. Um, it's, it's so weird to think we did that. Like, I, it makes me think of, like, catalogs. Remember when we would order out of, like, magazines? Yeah. yeah. Catalogs or, like, the, the commercials or it's like, call now, toll free. <sighs> oh, my gosh. There were so many of them on, like, Nickelodeon, too. Like, Have your parents call. You must be 18 or older. <laughs> yeah. Older to order. Yep. Um. Anyway, so however, Usher was ultimately taken out of this group by his mom as she wanted him to pursue bigger endeavors. There was a lot of um, headbutting towards the end as his mom kind of tried to get him to shine a little bit brighter than some of the other members of the group. So ultimately, um, they decided to part ways so that Usher could continue his career. Um, I'm saying um a lot today. I don't know why. So sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and there's so much to cover too. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> another um. Oh my god. Oh, well, that's good at least. Okay, cool. That makes me happy. Then shout out to Riverside because they're making this a lot easier. Uh, okay, let's see. So at 13, Usher met AJ Alexander at a local talent show, who was at the time Bobby Brown's bodyguard. Um, him and Usher became, Usher kind of became Alexander's protege, so to speak. <laughs> and he began having Usher perform in parking Everybody's lots and at talent shows. Usher's voice. And Usher went on to perform on, he made it across the board. Yeah. Um, and then while preparing for his debut album, Usher actually lost his voice because he was going through puberty around this time. Um, and this was about 1993 and because of this usher was having a difficult time adjusting his voice to his music because of puberty um this caused la reed to get skeptical of usher and actually put his album on hold they even went as far as almost dropping him from the label entirely and usher pleaded with reed and the label not to drop him not knowing what to do next the label actually sent usher to new york in the spring of 1994 to live with Puff Daddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Sean Combs, a.k.a. To Be Determined, because he keeps changing it. And he went on to attend what Reed called Flavor Camp. So he now basically has gone from being Alexander's protege to now being under the wing of P. Diddy, a.k.a. Sean Combs. 
So after graduating from high school, Usher continued to develop his skills as a stage performer and laid the groundwork for his second album. He also appeared on LaFace's version of Let's Straighten It Out, a 1995 duet with fellow Atlanta teen recording artist Monica. And he was also on Dreamin' from LaFace's 1996 Olympics Games benefit album, Rhythm of the Games. He was also featured on I Swear I'm in Love off the soundtracks of the 1996 film Kazam. So, officially on August 30th, 1994, LaFace released Usher's self-titled album with the co-executive production of Sean P. Diddy Combs. Usher peaked at number 25 on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. The album featured three singles, Can You Get With It, Think of You, and The Many Ways. The album has only sold 500,000 copies to date. I was going to say, I don't know any of those songs. I don't either. And this is actually probably due to the fact that he received a lot of backlash from the public. So this album was released when he was 15 years old and he was singing about sex. And a lot of people like didn't jive with that. Basically, they the public didn't respond well. So after all of that backlash and because the album wasn't as successful as it was anticipated, LaFace again was having reservations with Usher and continuing to have him stay on their label, essentially. And around this time is when Usher's mother actually decides to quit her career as a medical technician and decides to start taking control to help manage Usher's career. She'd kind of been dabbling a little bit before, as we saw with like new beginnings and stuff, but this is when she kind of really starts putting her hand in the pot. Um, And she starts entering him in more talent shows around the summer of 1999 to help help build a larger fan base. Um, And this kind of ultimately helps L.A. Reid regain some confidence in Usher as a musician and as a performer. Usher goes on to develop a friendship with American record producer Jermaine Dupri, with whom he co-wrote and produced several tracks for his second album. His second title, his second album was titled My Way, and it was released on September 16, 1997. The album's lead single, You Make Me Wanna, reached number one in the United Kingdom and became Usher's first record to be top single. The song also became Usher's first gold and platinum certified single in the United States. And the album had a second single, Nice and Slow, that peaked in January 1998 at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, giving Usher his first U.S. number one single. You Make Me Wanna also won Best Male R&B Soul Single at the 1999 Soul Train Music Awards. Usher also around this time made his acting debut on the UPN television series Moesha, which resulted in a reoccurring role on the series and subsequently his first film role in the 1998 The Faculty. Usher's extracurricular activities outside of recording the the recording industry gathered momentum over the following year as he was also cast in the soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful. He completed two more films, She's All That, and also starred in his first starring role in Light It Up, and then he also appeared in the Disney TV movie Geppetto which I've never seen that movie because didn't they just redo that movie? I, um, or just the Pinocchio. only one I know of is it was like, um, the wonderful world of Disney on Sunday nights on ABC. Like they mm-hmm. did. Brandy did Cinderella on that too. Oh, yeah. I think they did like a Japan. I don't remember. I don't think I watched it, but I, who was he like Jiminy cricket or something? I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. Yeah. Okay, um, and then I didn't know he was in She's All That. Yeah, I need to go back and see where he was in that. I was like, She's All That? That's yeah. the movie with Amanda Bynes. Right? No, that's She's the Man. Oh, uh, what am I mixing it up with? Hold on, let me click it. Up. Let me click it. She's All That is, I want to say it's Freddie Prinze Jr. Oh, it is. It I don't is. know the girl, but it's one of those, let's take her glasses off and she's hot all of a sudden movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I thought, yeah, it's because the, she's the man, she's all that. Um, I don't oh remember. <laughs> I know why you got mixed up. <laughs> she's the man and that she was on all that. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Okay, so Usher's third studio album was originally titled All About You and was st- uh, stated to be released in early 2001. The first single, Pop you Kala, was released in late 2001. The single did well in the UK and became a number two hit, but underperformed in the US. And due to the single's underperformance, the album was ultimately pushed back and reworked after certain tracks from the album were leaked to the radio and the internet. At this same time, LaFace Records was actually going dormant and moved Usher and most of its artists to its parent company, 
Arista or Arista Records, after revisions and a rename, Usher's third album, renamed 8701, was released on August 7th, 2001, 8701. The album singles, You Remind Me and You Got It Bad. You got it, you got it bad. This was when I first knew of Usher as a yeah. kid. It was this album. Same. And I don't remember, who, I remember exactly where I was when I, like, remember these songs because they were playing at one of my friend's houses and I just oh. remember standing in the kitchen listening to it and just being like I love it see like, I, I remember he did a concert on Nickelodeon and that's how I discovered him okay I just yeah I just remember that so vividly I don't know if I discovered him that day but that's like a core memory of Usher for me like listening to his music each of these songs topped the Billboard Hot 100 for four to four and six weeks respectively. 8701 has since been named a certified four platinum, four time platinum in the United States. Um, in February 2002, Usher won a Grammy for Best Male R&B Vocal Performance for You Remind Me. And in 2003, Usher won the same award for You Don't Have to Call, which made Usher the first, the only artist aside from Luther Vandross and Stevie Wonder to have won the same award consecutively. Usher rounds out 2002 with a quartet of television appearances on The Twilight Zone, Seventh Heaven, Moesha, and American Dreams. Usher's fourth album, Confessions, was released on March 23rd, 2004, just as its first single, Yeah, was on its sixth week at the number one on Billboard Hot 100. And I gotta just interject and say... This was a middle school bop. Yeah? Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the one where, like, you're at the dance and you're at the DJ stand, like, you need to play yeah. You need to play yeah. And they're like, yeah, get away from me. And then they're saving it for, like, the last song. But you're like, play it. They, it was so funny. They had to find a clean <laughs> version for my... I remember they had a clean version for middle school. And they honestly had to keep playing it because we would request it so many times that I, th I think they played it like five or six times within like the what two hours we clean? were there. Well, um... Oh, I to guess they say late... To the no, wall. let's get low, girl. Oh, let's get low. What am I thinking? <laughs> that was the other song, though. Like, those that are was the, the other middle songs school song. of middle no, school. Yeah. Yeah. This one didn't have to be clean. You're right. I'm sorry. I got I got too crazy right there. Okay. Whew, I got too hot with the middle school dance. <laughs> I guess they do say lady in the street, but a freak in the bed. I guess I that part could get edited out. And it did, I think, because what would happen is if you remember, like the only way to edit out is what they would do is they would play it and then they would just turn the volume down for that one part and then they turn it back up again. <laughs> and so they would um, play it at mine. Oh, they wouldn't play it, and so they turn it down, and you just hear all of us go, <laughs> a lady in the street, but I forget the sheets, and then it would just go back again. But yeah, this was definitely a middle school balk for anyone that was in middle school around this time. We were like 12, 13, and we were getting down. Um, that was the days of grinding, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. At middle school? We were... What was wrong with it? I Can you believe that's what I we were doing? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But I just remember... And I remember there were girls, like, in the corner with chairs giving lap dances. I, I just... How do kids dance now? Do they have middle school dances still? Important questions. I don't know. If, if we have any um, youngins listening... Let us know. Hit us up and let us know what it's like in, in middle school right now. I would be so Walk curious. Walk us through your day. <laughs> so anyway, so the album sold nearly 1.1 million unit sales in its debut and was the highest first week numbers ever scanned by a male R&B artist. The album officially sold over 15 million copies worldwide, with over 10 million copies sold in the United States alone. It earned the album a diamond certification by the RIAA, a.k.a. the Record Industry Association of America. And the album's second and third singles also topped the Billboard Hot 100. And Usher became the first artist to top the Billboard Hot 100 airplay with four consecutive number one singles. In September of 2004, My Boo also peaked on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming the album's fourth number one single. <laughs> this song was a duet with American singer-songwriter Alicia Keys. If you know, you know. Such a good My song. Boo. My boo. Confessions earned numerous awards, including four American Music Awards, 
two MTV Europe Music Awards, two MTV Video Music Awards, and three World Music Awards. At the 47th Annual Grammy Awards in 2005, Usher won three awards, which included R&B performance by a duo or group with vocals for My Boo, which was shared with Alicia Keys, rap slash sung collaborations for Yeah, and contemporary R&B album for Confessions. Usher was also recognized as Artist of the Year in 2000 at the 2004 Billboard Music Awards, in addition to receiving 10 other accolades. It's only 2004 at this he point. He did that, though. And he's crushing it. He did that, though. I, yeah. So you said there were four singles. Was that, that was Yeah, Caught Up, Burn, and My Boo? Yes, I think. Yeah, yes. Why do I feel like there were more? Maybe because I had the CD. They probably but, did have more, but these are like the top, the top singles, you know? Yeah. That, I mean, that album itself was just hot. I mean, that, clearly, look at all the like awards. The album of that year was yeah. Confessions. <laughs> and we were all up in our oh, feelings. Wait, Confessions Part oh, 2. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was, was going to say single the, too. Yeah, but it didn't show on here as like one of the ones which top. In the spring of 2005, Usher scored a number three Hot 100 hit as a featured vocalist on Lil Jon's Lover and Friends. In 2007, Usher also collaborated with R. Kelly on the track Same Girl for Kelly's album Double Up. He was also featured on the remix version of Amarian's Icebox, and he also appeared on the track Shakedown on American singer-songwriter Mary J. Bly's 2007 album Growing Pains. And now here's the next part. This is uh, this is some of his it's musical adjacent, and this is the stuff that kind of shocked me, or I guess not shocked me, but I didn't realize. So on August 22nd, 2006, Usher took over the role of Billy Flynn in the long-running Broadway revival of the musical Chicago. Usher played the role of Flynn for- Wait, mm-hmm. what? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Broadway? Broadway. Usher. Oh, sure. That's what I'm saying. Um, he played the role of Flynn for two months, but he came down with a case of strep throat that brought an abrupt ending to his run in Chicago. And the producer of Chicago, yeah. Barry Weisler, issued a statement sending his thoughts and best wishes to Usher for a quick and speedy recovery. Usher made a spectacular Broadway de- debut, bringing a great, a great dedication, work ethic, and his amazing talents to the show. We all hope that he might return at some point for the many fans that were unable to see his wonderful performance as Billy Flynn. Usher has found a new home at, on Broadway and is welcomed back anytime. So. He had a wow. little stint in Broadway, which is, I think is cool, but it clearly was short-lived because he got sick. Um, Usher's album, Here I Stand, was released on May 26, 2008 in the United Kingdom and May t- uh, 27, 2008 in the United States. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart with the, f- with the first week sales of over 433,000 copies. To date, Here I Stand has sold over 1.5 million copies in the United States and has been certified platinum by the RIAA and has sold over 5 million copies worldwide. While not approaching the success of his previous album, it received positive reviews from most music critics who praised the maturity of uh, in the album's lyrics. To promote Usher's fifth studio album, the single Love in This Club was sent to the radio in February 2008 and peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. This song, featuring Young Jeezy, went on to, spe- uh, to spend three consecutive weeks at the top, becoming Usher's eighth, number one single, and the fastest rising song of his career. It also reached number one on the hot R&B slash hip-hop top songs chart. The single was another huge international success for Usher, which at this point, what wasn't? With Confessions, he just made such a name for himself that anything he was releasing at the time was just straight to the charts. Exactly. So Raymond vs. Raymond was released on March 26, 2010 in Germany, March 30th, 2010 in the U.S., and April 26th, 2010 in the U.K. The album was expected to follow Usher's Confessions album's footsteps, and it featured singles such as Papers, Hey Daddy, aka Daddy's Home, and Lil Freak, which Daddy's Home I hadn't really heard until recently. It's become popular on TikTok. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I is, know that song. Which is funny. <laughs> OMG, which features Will I Am, is the third official U.S. single. <laughs> And the first international single. That had have been your senior year, right? Because I remember being oh, in college mm-hmm. when that came out. And that was just like 
crank it all the way up in the car near yes. you're in the car with your friends that was Honestly, such a good song 2010 had peak music and it was so great because i like i like you said i was graduating i was a senior and so like i couldn't have had no fucks left to give and so any music that came out i'm just like blasting it i'm just like rolling through like you're a freshman in college you're rolling through too like we had no fucks left to give at yeah. this point so this song received mixed reviews uh, complimenting the song's dance and club vibe, but criticizing the auto tune effect. Nah. It reached, which I mean, this was this was about the time we were really getting a lot of like, well, like T Pain and auto tuney kind of songs. Exactly, like T Pain ruined it. Like lately, I've been having a moment with that where I'm just like mad at T Pain because he's ruined music, even though he could have sang. And I know mm-hmm. Usher was one of the artists specifically to ask him, like, "Hey, man." please don't do this. You're going to ruin the music industry. And he did it anyway. And look what happened. Usher was right. <laughs> I mean, he completely yeah, botched I, it. Yeah. But this song, I will argue like the effect that auto tune gave this song was more of like a dance versus like yeah. everyone using auto tune just to cover their voices. Now it drives me nuts. hundred percent. This was the auto tune effect here was meant to create, like you said, like a dance beat or like kind of draw it out into a club. Yeah. Hit. It wasn't meant to, because, as we know, clearly, Usher's got a voice. We're not covering anything up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OMG reached number one in Ireland, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Australia, and the United States. The song became his ninth number one in the United States, making him the first 2010s artist to collect number one singles in three consecutive decades. And only the fourth wow. artist of all time to achieve the feat. He's only the fourth artist to have done it, but he was one of wow. them. He also became the third artist to have at least one number one sing- one number one song from five consecutive studio albums. He, I mean, I think, yeah, every one of them. Raymond vs. Raymond also dominated the international charts, debuting inside the top ten in Canada, the United Kingdom, Holland, Australia, Germany, Spain, and Italy. <laughs> Due to the huge international success of Usher's single, OMG, and the good first week sales for Raymond vs. Raymond, the album reached number two in Australia and has been certified by the Australian Recording Industry Association. The the album debuted in number four in Canada and has been certified gold by the Canadian Recording Industry Association. And Raymond vs. Raymond debuted at number two in the United Kingdom. In June 2012, Usher produced Looking For Myself, which was his fourth consecutive album to be number one on the Billboard's albums chart. In September 2016, Usher released his eighth studio album, Hard To Love, that featured singles No Limit, Crash, and Rivals. This album was his... Uh, was first made exclusive through a streaming service named Tidal that Usher actually co-owns with Jay-Z and a few other musicians. Oh, I didn't know Usher was on that. I knew Jay-Z owned it. Yeah, he's part wow. he's part co-owner. Um, and then Usher plans to release his ninth studio album, Coming Home, on February 11th, 2024, which is actually the same day he plans to headline the halftime show for the Super Bowl. So get ready, guys. Ah! Uh, wow! <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, I did not yes. know that! Mm-hmm. More Usher! So, d- okay, because... Sh- um, I don't mind. Was that just a single then? Because I was waiting I, for you to bring that. That was yeah, my jam. Back in the yeah, day. I like that song too. I was reading about it, but yeah, I don't think it was tied to any. Okay. Yeah, because I remember Crash coming out and I liked it, but it didn't get as big as I, and it's probably because it was on Tidal. I feel like things released on Tidal don't get as big. Mm-hmm. But... um. Yeah, I loved Shoddy, I don't oh. mind. <laughs> Among being widely talent- talented musically, Usher dipped his toes in quite a few other business ventures. He became part owner of the National Basketball Association's Cleveland Cavaliers in 2005. Wow. He founded a, yep, he founded a fragrance line that features the fragrances Usher He and Usher She. He heads the... New Look Foundation, which is a charity that he founded in 1999 that helps fund children in foster care and service programs, works to help the at-risk youth, and promote leadership skills for children um, in low-income communities. And his charity also helped in the rebuilding of New Orleans uh, after Hurricane Katrina. He also created his own record label called U.S. Records, 
which is a label that lets Usher take on the role of mentor and supporter of emerging artists. And it provides a platform for a new talent to showcase their music and benefit from Usher's experience in the industry. Is that where Bieber came in or was this after Bieber? Yeah, I think it was around this time because he was mentoring him. And then there was also some stuff too about how he, I saw he like egged his house supposedly or he was a part of the involvement of bieber's house being egged in like 2016 or something like that like he wasn't the one who did it but he really? was like involved i saw something about oh wow i didn't know justin bieber's house got egged wow yeah so i thought that was interesting so usher does have four kids he has usher raymond five aka cinco and he's the eldest he was born on november 26 2007 um, and his mother is Tamika Foster, whom Usher married. Then we have Naviad Ellie Raymond, and that's Usher's second son, who was born on December 10th, 2008. And he is also, um, his mother is also Tamika Foster. Then we have Sovereign Bo Raymond, Usher and his at-the-time girlfriend, Jenna, oh, I'm going to call her Jenna G, because her she, it's Italian, I think, or some kind of European, okay. and I'm going to botch it. So Jen, Jen G, they welcome their first child together, his one and only daughter, on September 30th, 2020. And then we have Sire Castrello Raymond, and he was born on September 19th, 2021. And he's the younger brother to Sovereign, also born to his at-the-time girlfriend, Jenna G. So I thought that was cute. Um, and then we'll roll into his wives. He's been married twice. So first we have Tamika Foster, who he was married to from 2007 to 2009. They had a very highly publicized relationship. Um, she was a stylist and a wardrobe consultant. I'm sorry, was, is, she still is. Um, and as I stated previously, they had their two children together, Usher Raymond Five, a.k.a. Cinco, and Naviad Ellie. Usher and Tamika's divorce was actually surrounded by controversy and media attention. The divorce was finalized in 2009, but it involved a series of legal battles and public disputes. Obviously, as you know, they had two kids, so custody battle was one of the battles they were fighting. It was probably the most significant point of contention. Tamika sought for primary custody while Usher aimed to maintain a joint custody. There were also allegations of infidelity, so there were reports that Usher was facing allegations of infidelity and rumors were circulating in the media regarding Usher's relationships outside of his marriage. Tension in the media. So, I mean, the divorce as well as their relationship was highly publicized. So this was causing them to ba basically make statements in the media, which was obviously causing controversy and tension between the two of them while they're trying to go through their divorce proceedings. And, of course, after that, legal battles are intensifying at that point. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just ongoing. They're just ongoing kind of bickering, battling. It's never really going to end. It seems like the tensions between them are really high. And it seems like even after the tragedy that they had in 2012, it's going to just keep keep snowballing from there. And then um, Usher was married one more time to Grace Miguel from 2015 to 2018. She was a businesswoman and she served as Usher's manager. And they actually kept their relationship. For, yeah, you never mix that kind of business and pleasure. It never no. ends well. Mm -mm. Um, they kept their relationship relatively private. However, in March 2018, they did decide to announce their separation and later file for divorce. And then the divorce was finalized pretty amicably, uh, marking the end of their marriage. And that is the story on Usher, or at least part of it. <laughs> if you guys want more in depth, let yeah, me know and I, I can mean, always do bonus. Yeah, because obviously he's, well, when this comes out, it'll be this week that mm -hmm. he's dropping a new album on us yeah i'm so excited <laughs> i am too no i'm excited i want to i'm excited to see him perform because i don't feel like i've seen him <sighs> perform in a while and i know he puts on a good show that is that is going to be a show because he dances too he's a pretty good dancer from what i remember oh yeah so no, yeah like you said he was like another michael jackson like yeah mm -hmm. he can do it all it's going to be really good, guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, now, uh, did you ever watch the cartoon Boondocks? A little bit, yeah. Did you ever see the Usher episode? I don't think so. Okay, so Amber knows this, but you guys don't. So my husband, 
lived under a rock growing up. Like, he listens to metal, and that's, like, all he knows. So, he it's so weird. He watched Boondocks, but he doesn't get any of the references in the show. So, he had me sit and watch it with him for, like, a month or so or whatever. We binged it. And I understand every little thing, and he I had to explain it to him. So, there was a whole episode on Usher, and this was in that time. Because they did, like, a number on Burn. They sang Burn in the show. Oh. <laughs> you should watch it. It's actually hilarious. Like, um, okay. Tom Dubois' wife is, like, hanging out with Usher, and Tom is having, like, a mental breakdown over it. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I'm excited. <laughs> it's really funny. It's, like, my favorite episode. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> 